be seated. Our small catechism reading for this morning is the second commandment. What is the second commandment? You shall not the name of the Lord your God. What does this mean? to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. The text for our sermon this morning is the Old Testament reading from Isaiah 50, especially verse 10. Who among you fears the Lord and obeys the voice of his servant? But him who walks in darkness and has no light, trust in the name of the Lord and rely on his God. Hear at the text. Dear friends in Christ, the winter of 1925 was terrifying for the residents of Nome, Alaska. The town's doctor, Curtis Welsh, after treating four cases of what at first appeared to be tonsillitis, came to a horrifying conclusion. This wasn't tonsillitis that was spreading, it was the deadly and highly contagious disease, diphtheria. Without an antitoxin, the whole town of 2,000 people and the surrounding native neighbors would likely be lost. The problem was magnified because in 1925, there were no roads to Nome, Alaska, and the shipping ports had been closed for the season due to ice. Well, why not just fly the antitoxin there? The problem was that the open cockpit airplanes of that time couldn't fly in the severe Alaskan winter weather. The closest source of the antitoxin drug was in Anchorage, Alaska, a thousand miles away. The Alaskan Railroad could bring the medicine to the village of Nina, but Nina was still 675 miles from there. No one was still 675 miles from the Nina. An important decision had to be made. The only known way to save the isolated residents was to deliver the medicine by dog sled. A relay team of 20 dogs, each traveling 30 miles, was coordinated. When Wild Bill Shannon, the first dog sledder to go, left Nina, the temperature was 40 degrees below zero. He carried a 30-pound package of the life-saving medicine. For even the most experienced dog sledder, 40 degrees below zero is brutal and risky. But with so many lives on the line, there didn't seem to be any other choice. He set his face to the biting wind and looked into the black darkness ahead. Darkness. If you've ever been to Alaska in the middle of the winter, you know that it's dark there 23 hours of the day. Wild Bill called Mush, and the dogs took off running. The path was dark and difficult for Wild Bill, and frankly, for the city of Nome as well. The truth is that for all of us, there are times in life when the path ahead looks dark and difficult, perhaps even darker than that 23 hours of daily midwinter Alaskan darkness. There are times when we aren't sure what direction to take and don't even know whether there's a solution. Perhaps it's when a series of tests have taken place and the diagnosis isn't good. Perhaps it's the pink slip at the end of your work day. Perhaps it's the loss of a loved one. Perhaps it's marital difficulties. Perhaps your child has wandered from the faith he or she had grown up with. You can add to the list of dark problems, I'm sure. There are times that we, like the residents of Nome and the dog sledders trying to rescue them, face a darkness that's frightening. How do we deal with it? Where do we find the strength to move forward? First, we need to realize that the root cause of all our dark problems is our separation from God after the fall into sin. There was a time when mankind walked with God in the pool of the day. There were no worries or concerns because God was near his human creation every step of the way. He talked with them like I am talking with you now. Well, except that God is awesome and perfect and I'm not. But you get the idea. The point is that when Adam and Eve wanted to do their own thing, sin entered into the world. That special kind of close relationship with God was broken. 
That's brought all sorts of problems, and that's also brought all sorts of dark doubts. Note that the separation from God was taken by Jesus on himself on the cross. Chapter 27 quotes Jesus in his human nature as saying, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus was carrying the sin of the world, and God the Father doesn't want close fellowship with sin. Next, though, we should remember that Jesus came into the world to make sure that that close relationship that had been lost would be restored. And the path for Jesus wasn't easy. He was confronted by Satan in the wilderness. He was rejected by many of his own people. He was spat upon, mocked, and frequently criticized. That night in the garden, Jesus, again, in his human nature, cried out to God to take away the cup of suffering that he was facing. That couldn't happen, of course. And Jesus did what he came to do. He trusted in the promises of God the Father. He obeyed his Father perfectly and died in our place. There, on the cross, by his atoning death, Jesus reconciled us to God and restored the relationship that had been broken. And that restored relationship was confirmed by Jesus' resurrection from the dead. Then, today, our reading from Isaiah 50 sheds additional light on our situation. This is the third of what are widely known as the servant songs in Isaiah. Each of the songs paints a picture of one called the servant. And with each song, the one reading them is likely to be convinced that the servant is Jesus, the promised Messiah, who came into the world to redeem the world. This, of course, was originally written for God's Old Testament people, hundreds of years before the Savior was even born. With that in mind, look at the description of the servant in this song. In verses 4 and 5, the servant is depicted as one who sustains the weary and listens. Verse 5, we're told that he is not rebellious and does not turn away from his mission. Verse 6 gives a strong description of the Messiah. He offers his back and cheeks to blows and does not hide his face despite the circumstances. What does he do? Verse 7 tells us that he sets his face like flint. What does that mean? He accepted his sufferings willingly and moved ahead with determination. He knew that he would not be put to shame. The things would turn all right, turn out all right in the end. So, when the road ahead seems dark, when even our faith seems darkened, when our life even seems to be in 24-7 darkness, this is the one we should turn to. He's been there and done that. He knows what it feels like to face a dark road ahead. Jesus assures us he is here nearby to help us face and get through whatever challenges we have in life. And he has some precious promises for us. He said, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. To the eleven disciples, concerned that Jesus was going back to heaven after his resurrection, he said, Behold, I am with you always, to the end of the age. He comforted his disciples with the words, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. But, before that authority would be fully realized, it was Good Friday. Jesus died on that dark day. The disciples were in hiding. Christianity seemed to be stopped in its tracks. A great darkness had descended on his followers. It seemed that all was lost. But Sunday was coming. We all have our own Fridays in some respect. Our days when our faith seems dark and we're feeling lost. But keep focusing on Jesus' promises. Our Sunday, our day of resurrection from darkness, is also coming, just as it did for the residents of Nome, Alaska. It was two o'clock in the morning when Gunnar Kaysen and his dog sled arrived in Nome. After the work of 20 dog sled teams, five grueling days, and 675 miles, the antitoxins arrived into the hands of the doctor. The town would be saved. But it wasn't without cost. A few of the dogs died, and a few of the dog sledders had severe frostbite. Today, the annual Iditarod Dog Sled Race commemorates the 1925 accomplishment of this life-saving defeat of Gnome's Darkness. Yet, 
That being said, all those in Jolm who were saved from diphtheria that year would still die someday by some other cause. So we look for something even greater than dedicated dog letters and the heroic huskies. For Christians, our great victory over darkness happened when the servant sent by God broke through death and earned eternal life and light for us. He's given us the antitoxin, his word, baptism, and his holy supper. We celebrate that victory not once a year like the Iditarod, but every Sunday, trusting in the name of the Lord and relying on our God. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We rise for kneel for prayer.